Good afternoon and welcome to the stream. Um, today I'm going to be playing some Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 and I'm actually going to be recreating a flight that I did um, this past, I believe it was Tuesday, um, which was from Frankfurt to Munich, Germany. And um, I'm kind of going to just jump into it right now and I'll explain why I'm doing this flight and um, uh, that kind of thing. Um, so I do need to make sure I set this up correctly. Um, I'm going to need to look up... Okay, so I'll just go ahead and explain. Um, on Tuesday I did this exact flight, but something very strange happened um, because I actually ran out of fuel right as I was on approach. and. Um, that's never happened to me before in Microsoft Flight Simulator and you know this is not a long flight by any means and it, it was uh, I just thought that was very strange because I would have thought you know um, I would have thought they would give me just automatically enough fuel to fly you know hundreds and hundreds of miles um, but I didn't even have enough enough fuel to fly. I mean, this says 26 minutes, but in reality, it's it's more like an hour long flight. So basically what I'm doing right now is I just want to make sure I have everything set up exactly the same way um, that I did on Tuesday. So I was leaving from gate, gate parking 12. says gate parentheses parking. Oh, hold on. I think it's going to be one of these parkings. Or maybe it's... Hmm. There it is. Gate parking 12. Departure was direct. Arrival was direct. And approach was ILS 8 left. There it is, and that's the same weird little squiggly thing at the end that I had last time. Um, I'm just going to do it. I don't think it'll make a difference, but I am going to turn the date back to... Uh, what is the date today? It's already the 19th. But so it would have been the 15th of uh, December, and the time was 3.02 in the morning. I don't think that's going to make a difference, but I want everything to be exactly the same setup. Uh, system citation is correct. Flight conditions, I had it on automatic weather. And so I'm just going to leave it on, on live weather. I'm not sure if that's going to make a difference, but we'll see. That all looks like it's the same. Can't quite see it all on my stream, but it looks the same. And that's going to be it. Uh, I am starting from the gate, so the airplane's going to be cold and dark. I'll have to start it up and taxi. Unfortunately, the taxi at Frankfurt is uh, pretty long. And before I go any further, let me make sure my stream audio is coming across well. Check, check. I am checking my stream audio. How does my stream audio sound? Audio. Sounds pretty good. As always, just let me know if there's anyone out there who's watching and uh, notices an, an issue with my stream. Okay, so here we go. One thing that I will not really be able to recreate is how long it took to actually get to the runway. Um, 
you know, I'm, I'm hopefully we'll get there faster. Last time I kind of stumbled around the uh, startup process and uh, and just kind of stumbled around on the uh, taxiways for a while. But um, at least I'll be able to, right at the start here, I'll be able to compare how much fuel um, is on board. I'm just scrolling to that point in my video. And there it is. So right at the beginning, I know you can't see this right now, but right at the beginning, I know I zoom in on my engine display. There it is. It's 1440 pounds of fuel in each each tanker. Not really sure how that readout works. I assume it's just each wing. So 1440. Um, if they give me 1440, I should be in pretty much the exact same situation as last time. Um, but, so, just to kind of reiterate, um, the reason I'm doing this flight is because the last time I did it, on Tuesday, it was just crazy. The whole, white, whole flight went very smoothly until I was just on approach. And basically I ran out of fuel just shortly before reaching the runway like maybe I maybe half a mile or so um, and that was crazy like there's no way I could have planned that um, because I didn't know the weather the wind uh, all that kind of thing it, it would have been impossible to plan it that perfectly and I was able to dead stick land so basically this time I'm I'm experimenting to see if that same thing will happen and I do kind of wonder if I didn't hit something in the cockpit that, that made that happen. So, like I said, the plane is cold and dark, so I will have to go through my procedures here. I'm going to set the comms to be AI controlled just to give myself one less thing to deal with. Okay, parking brake is set. Power levels are idle. Generator switches, face down here, and actually I'm going to be smart this time. Before I turn anything on, I'm going to crank these dome lights a little so that I can actually see what I'm doing. Okay, generators are on. Battery switch is on. System test. Okay. And avionics is on dispatch. Frankfurt clearance delivery Cessna November 75649er IFR to Munich ready to copy. Cessna November 75649er is clear to Munich airport as filed. Take off runway 18 climb and maintain 10,000 feet. Departure frequency is 127.6 squad 2032. So I do indeed have... Cessna November 75649 are cleared to Munich Airport as filed. Take off runway 18 climb and maintain 10,000 feet. Departure on 127.6 squaw 2032. Cessna 649 are read back direct. Contact ground on 121.9 or 55. So I do, and have, do indeed have that same 1440 pounds of fuel, um, so I guess we'll, uh, we'll see what happens this time around. Oh, my parking brake was not set, as it turned out. Good thing, uh, good thing I noticed that in time. Okay, engines Frankfurt are ground. running. Frankfurt Cessna November 75649 are requesting pushback. November 
turn on my avionics now. looking good. Come down here. Engine starters are indeed off, which is good. And that's it. So I'm actually not totally clear what's going on here. It's raining exactly like it was on Tuesday. So I'm thinking maybe the weather, the live weather information is saved based on, based on the, uh, the time. Um, and that just brings up another element. On Tuesday, as I did this flight, I switched the time of day, you know, back and forth just to get some sun, um, you know, just to, to add some aesthetic to my flight. And that is going to also affect your uh, fuel burn rate. Requesting the end of pushback. So that's just one more way in which you know, there's no way that I could have planned to run out of fuel on approach like that. Ground Cessna November 75649er with whiskey ready to tack the IFR. Cessna November 75649er taxi to and hold short of runway 18 by taxi wave Sierra 100011 Romeo Romeo 15 cross runway 7 right Mike 25 Mike Yankee 1 Yankee November. Contact tower on 118 decimal 78 when ready. Taxi to and hold short runway 18 by a taxiway Sierra 100011 Romeo Romeo 15 cross runway 7 right Mike 25 Mike Yankee 1 Yankee November Cessna 649er. So I did get the same pedo heat on left right uh, warning last time. I don't know what it means. On L R. I don't, I just don't know what that means. I, I know I need pedo heat to be on. As I didn't have airspeed readings last time. Um, yeah, I don't know what to do about that, so I'm just gonna silence that warning. And we are good to go. It's gonna be a quick turn to the left. And yes, it is 1.82 nautical miles to the threshold, so. You'll have to bear with me a little bit, but again, I just wanted to make sure I was repeating the exact um, exact thing I did on, on Tuesday. And obviously, quite a bit of gas was burned just getting to the runway, so... I would expect the stream to take about an hour and a half. It took almost exactly an hour and a half on Tuesday. Might be a little bit faster this time, so maybe hour and 15 minutes, just because I'm not, you know, messing around as much and um, you know, sitting around. After the last stream I did, I just kind of sat there and freaked out for a while because I couldn't believe what had happened. And I'm going to taxi a little bit on the fast side, just because it is so far. In the meantime, I am uh, going to go ahead and set up my autopilot here. FMS1 is on. Go ahead and dial in. I think last time I just did 8,000 feet. They'll tell me where to go once I'm in the air. Get that ready to go. No damper. This is all fine. Half bank should be on. Good. Turn on my flight director. Uh, kind of like to see the weather. On my PFD. <laughs> Interesting. I'm not sure what the deal is with the the weather display here. Obviously, the, this is not really how the weather is around me. So there must be something um, something weird about being on the ground that messes with how that displays.
Okay, I'm holding short of 1-8 by taxiway S10, S11R14, crossing s runway 7R. So I have clearance to cross 7R. There's no way I could do this without having the ribbon on. Totally lost. It's good to just double check. Clear right, clear left. Looking at my past stream over here, trying to see if I can get a glimpse of what the fuel load was uh, when I entered the runway right before takeoff. Because I've already burned, you know, I've already burned about 30 pounds. Um, so that's, that's not nothing. This is runway 3618. Okay. 
Okay. Which I really don't have permission to cross. But nobody's given me a clearance, so I guess I just have to. It's just one of those glitchy little things. I, I think that the AI in this is sometimes not always the greatest. I, I do hope they're still working on it, because, you know, when I watch people fly um, X-Plane, um, it really seems to be better figured out. Although, honestly, when I watch people play that, usually they are in either Batson or Pilot Edge, so they have, like, a real controller, if you will, so there wouldn't be some of those same glitches. There's a guy on the runway right there. Or that's, hold up, that's a taxiway. Hopefully I'm clear, not really checking very well. So last time, shortly after takeoff, I think I can see this. Okay, so I'm right at the threshold here. Tower Cessna November 75649 are ready to go runway 18 ISR to Munich. Cessna November 75649 are cleared for takeoff runway 18. Cleared for takeoff runway 18 Cessna November 75649 are. 1250. So shortly after takeoff, but before I really get onto my flight plan, um, I have 1250 pounds in the tank. So uh, that's probably what I might do. No, I don't know. What I could do is lower my fuel to 1250 when I get on my flight plan this time around. But I'm not sure that makes sense. Well, I'll figure it out in a minute. Okay, one notch of flaps, clear for takeoff, taking the runway. We'll be climbing out to the left. Altitude is set at 8,000, should be a good place to start. Here we go. Half throttle, let it stabilize. Push the takeoff speed. Rotate is 130. Run us very quickly and rotate. Positive rate of climb, gear is up.
So autopilot is engaged, uh, nav mode, and flight level change. For some reason, my co-pilot has totally dropped the ball on the squat code. Don't know why. Let's see what happens, I guess. 2000, dialed in. Get FLC again. We'll head up there. At this point, all I really need to do is manage my throttle. It's funny, I actually don't know how to squawk in this plane. I don't know where I don't know where any of the radio controls are to be honest. They must be in here somewhere. So I am down to 1,200 pounds of fuel. I think that means I'm pretty much on a similar track as I was the first time around. Um, could change the time of day to something with a little sun. I did that at around this time in my last flight. And I think I went, I think it was just very early in the morning. It was kind of a yellowish color. like that. So we'll uh, we'll roll with that for the time being. Just double check, gear is up, flaps are up. I am a little faster than cruise speed, but I'm still climbing, so I'll leave that where it's at for now. And there I go, punching through the clouds, just like last time. 7,000 feet to go. Everything is going smoothly so far, right on my flight plan. Not really sure what's going on with my uh, weather radar here. That looks really bad. I guess this is just indicating overcast clouds? Not sure. Wind appears to be in the same direction as my last playthrough. So it was, that's right, because I remember commenting I had a crab, I was crabbing toward the right, because the wind was coming from the left. Getting above those clouds, beautiful, just beautiful. Look at that, it doesn't get more beautiful. did read um, after my flight on Tuesday, I just read a little bit about plane icing because I had noticed, well, why don't I go ahead and show, there's 
a lot of ice shown on this plane. And I was just curious to know what, what amount of ice was really realistic. Um, and there were a number of people online who were voicing their opinion that Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 really over-exaggerates the amount of ice that builds up oops, that builds up on on your plane. Um, so it's a really cool, it's a very cool effect for them to have, you know, built into the game, but they, you know, they overdid it. That actually looks better than it did on, on Tuesday. On Tuesday it was already, like, very thick. Coming up on my 22,000, so I will go ahead and get my throttle down to cruise. Check my flight plan, still right where I'm supposed to be going. Uh, let me zoom out my zoom out my PFD just so I can see my whole flight, just to give an idea of my progress. Punching back into the clouds here. Should be totally out of them in a little bit. And it might be might be pretty clear for the remainder of the flight. But I'm gonna I'm not gonna touch the weather at all. Because I'm not sure I'm not sure if that had anything to do with the uh, the weirdness of my last flight. Yeah, fuel is is definitely low. I I think once again they they really did not provide enough fuel for me to make this flight. And I guess you know it's partly on me because I'm not I'm not doing anything to request more fuel, and that's obviously something a pilot should check. But at the same time, it's it seems really strange that they set me up with such a low low fuel weight. I really should get track IR. I might even get a, a VR headset for myself this Christmas. I think that would just be incredible, because that's always been one of my biggest problems with flight simulators in general, is that you can never... It's so much more work to look around the cockpit and, you know, find things than it is in real life. In real life, you're just kind of touching different buttons. Um, it's much easier. But I do think if I get a VR headset, I will need to upgrade my GPU, because I know that takes a ton of calculation power, and I'm kind of interested in upgrading my GPU anyway, just to, um, you know, see if I can push this game just to its absolute limit, graphically. Today. That is one thing that I definitely do think um, Microsoft Flight Simulator has has the upper hand on um, over X Plane is the clouds. You know, in X Plane there are clouds, and you know they're, they're there, and it looks pretty realistic. But this just looks incredible. The sense of depth you get. I mean, I, I've never seen anything like this in a game before. You know, even even the extremely realistic simulators that real pilots use, they do not look like this. Not even close. And yes, I have actually flown in those a, a few times. When I was very young, we had a couple, a couple pilot friends. One of them was a FedEx pilot, and another one, I believe, was actually a um, simulator trainer person for FedEx, and we had the opportunity to fly in, in the FedEx simulators, um, which was amazing and incredible. Um, 
coolest part about them, of course, is you know the the simulator cab is sitting up on hydraulics. So like I just remember when you throttled up, the cab would actually um, just tilt backward, so you would get that like feeling of being like pushed back into your seat by the thrust of the plane. That is really cool. Um, but I was like you know 10 or maybe 11 years old at the time. And so every time I came in for the landing, the instructor would just flip off the hydraulics because if you land hard, um, it will like really shake the cab. Like it, it, it exerts a lot of pressure. And he didn't want to be putting the millions and millions of dollars of equipment through through the paces hydraulically. That would be you know, I don't know what the policy is as far as letting civilians use that equipment. I'm sure the run cost is just hundreds, if not thousands of dollars per hour uh, just to run that stuff. Um, and I think it would be even worse if he were to do that and break it in the process. Or, uh, you know, lead to needing a costly repair. So he would just flip the hydraulics off and... Um, land like that but then other times when you know the real pilots were landing they they did have them on and so you got to feel that because you get the feeling that, that you really get it's incredible if, if you ever have the opportunity I highly recommend it As long as I'm just cruising here, I'm going to go ahead and go into the drone camera and take a look around. I always get this uneasy feeling when I leave my plane behind. There's another plane over there, ways. Maybe I'll go check him out in a second. Like, what if something happens that I, I'm not fast enough to get back to it and course correct? completely down to get out of that situation. Actually startled me a little bit because the controller, I'm using a Xbox controller to control the drone camera. That's a trick a lot of people don't know. You just connect an Xbox controller, and I still have my joystick here, but then with the Xbox controller you can fly the drone and it's really easy, just like any any other game. You just use the two thumbsticks. Um, but when I got the overspeed warning, the controller actually uh, actually vibrated. It started to play. Lex Arca 572, contact Munich Center on 120.65. Cessna 6.9er, contact Munich Center on 120.65. Going to 120.65, lift on the 572. 
going to 120 decimal, 65 Cessna, 649er. Munich Center, Cessna, November 75, 649er, flight level 220. Cessna, November 75, 649er, Munich Center, continue to live the list planned. Just look at that. It's just so beautiful. And what's even crazier about it, like beyond just the the aesthetic of this, like this is not even a very interesting place on earth. Like it's not the Himalayas. It's just the German countryside, which of course is beautiful. But the crazy thing about it that just blows my mind is that it's real. Like those buildings down there, they're actually there. And if you went there, this is exactly what what you would see. I just, I can't believe the technical achievement um, of this game. It's just, just incredible. So let's see, my plane, oh, there's another plane right there. I wonder which one is mine. I think it looks like I'm following this one right here. That one looks pretty close though. I'm gonna go check that out. Turn my drone speed up so I can get there quickly. Munich Center Magic Sun Flight 030 is out of flight level 3900 for 10,000 feet. Magic Sun Flight 030 Munich Center, continue as planned. It's also amazing how far you can take the drone camera, just anywhere you want. I mean, I, I think I could be on the other side of the planet from my plane if I wanted to. Let's see what we got here. That's an A380. That's amazing. I didn't even know there were A380s in this game. Okay. But I guess I guess I should have known that. It's, it's the king of the skies for sure. doing here. Speed's a little low. Tap it up a little bit. Altitude is pretty much right on. Uh, I never did reconfigure my lights. Oops. Let's go there. Actually, I'm not totally clear on the rules for, uh, for lights, but what I think it is, is you should always have your beacon on and you should always have nav lights. Nav, I think that's just your green and red. 
strobe you should only have on when you're taking off, landing, or in the air. Otherwise, if you're just taxiing, you shouldn't have that on because that's the super bright one that allows for uh, distance to see the plane at a long distance. Landing lights are obviously for landing, taxi lights are obviously for taxiing, and logo is just because. Um, it just shines the light on your tail where the, uh, the, the airline logo is or the whatever livery you have. Shines it on, highlights the logo. I'm getting closer here so I can zoom in on my PFD a little bit. Obviously, the weather is cleared up quite a bit, so it's not really going to be an ILS approach. Yeah, it might be. The clouds are pretty high though, so I think it's going to be fine. Yeah, looking at the fuel, it is draining fast, so it's. I don't think I'm gonna make it just just from judging or just looking at this. Um, let me zoom out. Oops. Oops. There's Frankfurt, so I'm I'm here, but I have this long S thing to go through. So I think I'm. It looks like about halfway. I was at 1400. Alright, all the way down to 650 now. So I've I've used up more than half of my fuel, and I'm I don't think I'm much further than halfway there. So I think it's going to be very similar to last time, where at some point on my the last little stretch, um, I'm just going to run out of fuel. It's so weird. I just don't understand why why they wouldn't give you enough fuel. Because I feel like any other time I fly, I feel like I have fuel to go for just hours and hours and hours. I don't understand why that wouldn't be the case um, on this particular flight plan. So we'll see what happens. I'm not feeling great about it right now though. Uh, another thing that happened last time was I started to descend without having been given that order yet because I was getting nervous that I wouldn't have enough time and this time I'm going to trust the AI controllers and not descend until I am specifically told to uh, start my descent. I am coming into the S turn right now. Zoom my PFD back in. Right there, at rope kill. My descent, I believe, starts around D cell. And um, I think right when I get on this last line here, that's when I'm, I'll change my nav to look one and flip on my approach mode. My fuel burn will slow down for a while because through through my descent. I'll be at zero throttle. I'm at about half throttle right now. I almost wonder... I almost wonder if the fuel is calculated based on... Um, based on the you know, the distance between the two airports as the bird flies, which is quite a bit shorter than what I'm flying because of this, you know, this weird S-curve S approach. That could be it. But it's still just, I mean, it's, it's not just too little fuel, it's way too little fuel. Like, I don't know what the max is, but so I had about half fuel basically. Let's switch it to the pounds, yeah. So it's at 20% and it's at 6, so the max would have been 3,000, right? 
five times six is 30, so 3,000 pounds, and I only had 1,400, so it was about half, a little less than half. Makes no sense to me. Once again, just getting nervous about my elevation, so I want to make sure I didn't get to change flight level. Oh, that was a long time ago. Not much chatter. And I thought I did have the... Uh, I thought I did have the traffic set to max. Because I like to, you know, see planes around me. still seems very quiet. Or maybe I have it set to real traffic and there's there's just not many flights in this area right now. There's not many flights anywhere in the world right now with COVID. Messaging my girl girlfriend, she uh, she's actually getting some tats right now. She's getting a bat on the back of her uh, her neck and um, a beetle on her left forearm. She is already a tatted individual. She has a um, a Kurt Vonnegut sketch on her right for or I don't know what you call like like the underside of your arm. I think, like, the whole thing is the forearm, but, like, the underside of her forearm, I guess you would call it. She has a Kurt Vonnegut sketch that's um, the Goodbye Blue Monday cow, um, which basically... If, if you don't read Kurt Vonnegut, this, is, this explanation is not going to make any sense, but basically the sketch is a combination of a few different ideas, and... So, I'll just, I'll just start from the beginning. The phrase, Goodbye Blue Monday, was used as part of an advertising campaign targeted at stay-at-home women in, like, the 50s. And the phrase, the idea behind the phrase was that women can say goodbye to Blue Monday by buying this product, which I think was, like, a cleaner or something like that something intended to make, you know, domestic work easier. A cleaner or a mop or something along those lines. So in the book, which is Breakfast of Champions, which I, is just, it's really in my top five books ever, um, he goes on this kind of rant about animal rights and talks about what life must be like from the perspective of beef cattle and you know I, I am not a vegetarian I tried it I made it about a month and I just I just couldn't do it but I really recognize and acknowledge you know two things about meat eating one it's not sustainable it's very bad for for the planet and two um, you know the, the human brain is more developed than other animals but it's not fundamentally different. Like any other animal, we have the capacity for, for very similar experiences, pain, emotion, um, all these things. And so I, I don't feel great about eating meat anymore. And it's kind of a bit of a cop-out, but I do consider myself to be something called a reducitarian, which is just a person who strives to eat less meat. So, you know, if there's ever the option, I will go with a Beyond Burger um, or Impossible Burger. And 
if I'm eating something like a salad, I'll just go with like the Caesar salad and not do a chicken Caesar salad because it doesn't really add that much to the experience. And I love the uh, the plant-based burgers. I, I think they actually taste better than beef. Um, so anyway, uh, the tattoo, back to the, the Vonnegut sketch, that the, the sketch is basically, you know, I don't remember exactly what the idea is, but it's something like, um, you know, the cow saying goodbye to Blue Monday. Um, because it's, it's somehow escaped its predicament of being a beef cattle. So that's, that is that. Um, the bat she's getting, I haven't even seen the sketch by the artist, so I have no idea what it's going to look like, but I think it's hanging upside down by its feet. It's just going to be on the back of her neck. Um, she really likes bats. I, I like bats too, honestly. I think they're one of the coolest animals. Uh, she loves Halloween. Halloween's her favorite holiday, and she likes things that are, you know, spooky and morbid and, and all that kind of thing. It's just, just who she is, I guess. And then the beetle uh, is going to be a stag beetle, which has those really big pincers on the front. And it's just going to be on her, the underside of her left forearm. And I don't remember if there's a particular symbolism to it, but I know at one time she was considering putting a scansion between its pincers, and a scansion is... It's a notation for poetic meter, and I don't remember what poem she was going to do a scansion of, um, but I, I don't think she's doing the scansion. I think it's just going to be the beetle for now, and then she might go back and add the scansion. All of her tattoos Tower are just November black. Tower Cessna November 649 er is 9 -er miles northwest with Echo to land. Cessna November 75649 er Tower Airport is currently IFR. Request denied. Great. Um, all of her tattoos are just black line art. Tower Cessna November 75649er is 10 miles northwest with Echo to land. Cessna November 75649er Tower Airport is currently IFR. Request denied. Um, okay. I guess. Let me see if I can ignore the weather. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do this. Something I've messed up. I'm, I'm not really sure what, but I'm just gonna enable ignoring weather and then request a full Tower stop. Cessna November 75649er is one four miles west with echo to land. Cessna November 75649er tower. Make straight in runway 8 left. Altimeter tree 0 decimal 21088 at 14. Fly straight in runway 8 left Cessna 649er. 3.01, how er, 0.21 on the altimeter. So unfortunately, that means we're not going to be getting our altitude readout, which means I have to do it manually. And I apologize for uh, for interrupting my own story there, but um, let me see, I could not get this to work last night. Supposedly, you can scroll through this thing. Yeah, it's just not working. I think there's a bug in this. Because I've seen people do it online. They can scroll through this thing and go down to map symbols, and they can turn on their um, their elevations there. But I can't, I can't do it. I don't, I have no idea what the... What? Now it's working. I, I don't understand. I really don't understand. Whatever. Okay, so I got constraints turned on, and uh, it looks like 5,000 to me, so I'm way high. So I'm going to go ahead and set throttle to zero and begin my descent to 5,000. What is that sound? I didn't... I didn't deploy flaps. It shouldn't do that automatically, I didn't think, in this plane. And I have 
clearance to come straight in, so I don't think it matters what elevation I'm at. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the speed brake to 50, just to get me down a little faster. Hopefully, uh, hopefully I can still make it. Fuel is at 362, so very low. Once again, I it's gonna be just really, really close. Um, and it might be the case that just that extra time that I took taxiing around last time was, you know, the difference between... Oops, I did not hit my flight level change. Okay, so now I'll start to nose down, pick up airspeed, and um, get down to 5,000, hopefully pretty quick. I think it kind of caps you on your, your descent rate, around 3,500. Probably smart. Nav mode is still on, so it should uh, should bring me through this next turn here nicely. Any second. Take a look outside. Airport. Should be. I think I might see it right there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's it. Could try to check it out with the drone, but I kind of want to keep it. Kind of want to stay in the aircraft for now. Here goes my turn. turn. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I see the airport. Uh, yeah, that looks like the runway right there. There's a bit of water right before it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and change my PFD from weather to terrain. see the airport yet, but I'll see. I'm thinking there's going to be some water just to the the left and a little bit closer. Let's see, where did that go? Lost it. Oh, it's, it's over here. There it is. I'm quite sure I see a runway there. I see a runway there. Maybe a third runway there. A bit of water. Just getting lined up. Fuel. About 350. Yeah, I swear I did not I did not put my gear down. I'm not sure why that happened. Control aircraft is off. That's good. I don't know. I can't explain that, but maybe the speed brake activates your gear for some reason. It just helps it helps with the drag? I don't know. Well, at least I got this constraints thing to work. I tried it for a while last night, and I, I could not for my life get it on. It's definitely buggy, because like, you can hear it clicking, but nothing appears. to be on the outer ring. That's part of it. Leave constraints on. Yeah, basically we need to be down at 5,000 by the time we get to Magat. So Airbus A320 is a lot nicer because it just pretty much does all that for you. There's like VNAV mode. 
and now I'm getting a very clear view of those runways. Got rabbits. Looks like there's actually only two runways. I'm going for eight left, so it'll be this one over here. Right on flight plan. Could go ahead and switch over to the local one. I think I will. But I'm not going to hit approach yet because I'm still quite a bit too high. I think I'll, I think I'll do a level of flaps at Maggot or Magot, and then full flaps at DMEO. What is that? DM DMEOs? DMEOs? Let's see, fuel. It's burning a lot slower now. Looks like there's quite a bit of difference between left and right tank, which is. Interesting. I guess just because I turned the right engine on first, it burned a little more. Altitude's coming down nicely. Looking pretty good on glide slope just from here. Localizer, uh, well, I have this. I have the left-right bug, but I don't have my elevation bug yet. Not sure why. There it is. Perfect. And I'm right on glide slope. Because of that, I think I will go ahead and hit approach mode and let that let that do its thing. It's going to bank me left because it's trying to get lined up with the runway. That's what these cyan markings are. It's indicating that I'm I'm left of the runway. And if I look out the window, yeah, you can kind of see that's the case. So I'll level off and then turn right a little bit. And I am now below glide slope, so I actually need to increase my throttle. Put it at about 40% for now. Autopilot has gotten me right lined up with the runway perfectly. And uh, yeah, I'm looking good. Fuel is down to a little bit above 300, so I think this time, I think this time I'm going to be totally fine. Because on Tuesday, by the time I reached Maggot, I was already down at about 100 pounds. So I'm gonna be I'm gonna be just fine this time. So that's kind of making me think that I must have either it must have just been messing around on the taxiway, taxing slowly, and or just having my throttle at a different setting when I was up in the air. Um, that must have been it. You know, the other thing, I just realized something. On this flight, they brought me to, what was it, 2200, flight level 22? And, or flight level 220. And I just stayed there. But last time, this, this is probably it. Last time, they brought me up to 22, and then they brought me up to 30, dropped me back down to 22, I think, and then back up to 30. So I had all this extra climbing, and I went much higher. Um, I think that must have been it, now that I'm thinking. But either way, you would think that there would just be plenty of fuel on board to do that. Okay, things are looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and bring the speed brake up need to be doing that anymore. Right on glide slope, there's this GS indication right here in the PFD, that means that my glide slope is locked in, everything's looking good, speed is a little bit high, um, I am at maggot, so I think I will drop that first level of flaps, and then at, like I said, at DMEOS, or is it is that DMEO5 or an S? I think it's an S. I'll drop the, the next level. So, one level of flaps right here.
not quite as pretty of a descent this time around. On Tuesday it was, well, I had the time of day set to very early morning, so there was a nice orange glow, and there was some beautiful just kind of low clouds, fog almost, just kind of sitting along the ground here. It's really, really beautiful looking. Okay, just a little landing checklist. Gear is down, turn on my landing lights, get those on. Flaps are at half, throttle is low, speed's looking good. It's looking like DMEOS is actually maybe too close to the runway, so I'm gonna go ahead and drop my second level of flaps now. That looks plenty close to me. Right on my bugs, glide slope is connected. Everything looks good. getting pretty low. I think my target landing speed is 110, so I'll bump the throttle up a little bit. It's about 40% right now. I do have clear landing clearance. Fly straight in. No, I don't have clearance, so should be getting that any second now. A little bit below glide slope due to my speed, so I'll bump it up to about 50%. Maybe 60%. Flaps are full, speed brake is up. There's no auto brakes in a Cessna citation, unfortunately. Cessna 649 are cleared to land runway 8 left. Wind 118 at 14. Perfect. Cleared to land runway 8 left, Cessna 649 are. The wind is coming from the northeast. It's fine. It's very light anyway. Two whites, two reds. It means I'm perfect on glide slope. Corroborated by my bugs here. Speed is a little bit fast, so I'll crank it down, back down to around 50 throttle. 55. And once I get pretty much right over the rabbit, I will uh, hit this yaw damper autopilot disconnect and fly it manually in. You do have to flare. Everything looks good. Speed's a little low. I think that 55% is just about the sweet spot for this plane. Two whites, two reds, right on my bugs, 110 knots, perfect. Gear is down, flaps are down, fuel is around. 200, so definitely not going to have the uh, another miracle at Munich. 500. 500 call out, getting close to the rabbit. Still, I haven't touched the you know the joystick at all for this entire flight. So this is truly a um, an IFR flight, almost entirely autopilot. And here I come. Give it a little bit more, and I'll take over. I'm actually not sure what that warning was, but I'm guessing that was probably a, a warning telling me I was getting close. bit of flare here. Touch 
touchdown. We do have plenty of uh, plenty of runway to work with, so I'm not gonna slam on the brakes or anything like that. Uh, looks like I can pretty easily make this taxiway. We'll give it a little bit of brakes. To Flaps are coming up, don't need those anymore, don't want to catch the wind or anything. Let's see if my co-pilot can handle that. One two one decimal seven eight for Cessna six four nine er. Thank you. I'll bring it to a stop so we can get our taxi orders. Okay, autopilot is off. Flaps are up. Fuel is 180. So we got we got enough fuel to make it, that's for sure. Uh sounds like uh my co-pilot's not gonna help me with the with contact and ground, so. We're gonna go ahead and taxi to. I don't think we need to taxi to the gate. We'll taxi to parking. Ground Cessna November seven five six four nine or taxi to parking. Cessna November seven five six four nine or taxi to General Aviation parking via taxiway Echo Delta Charlie Alpha Bravo. Taxiing to General Aviation parking using taxiway Echo Delta Charlie Alpha Bravo Cessna six four nine or. And that's it. That was a uh, pretty smooth flight right there. We left from a very dark and rainy place, very thick clouds, punched out of those, and really had a very nice clear flight after that. Not totally clear. Had some clouds, you know, just to uh, give you something interesting to look at, but Definitely not a low visibility situation. hear any runway crossings, so I guess I'm just on taxiways all the way to the end here. I would totally navigate taxiways without the ribbon, but a lot of the time there's not enough um, taxiway signs, and they're kind of hard to read in this game, so I, I just turn the ribbon on to make it easy. You know, in the real world I would have a chart, and it would be pretty easy to to navigate using that, and I'm, I know those charts are online, and I could go look them up. But taxiing is not really the uh, fun part, so I just like to turn on the ribbon, make it easy on myself, and you know, get where I'm going. Pretty long taxi here as well. Still got 0.86 miles to go. I'm really excited to see my girlfriend's tattoos. I'm, I'm always nervous about tattoos. What the heck is going on here with this traffic? Hold up, I gotta stop and take a look at this. Oh man. <laughs> so, this is obviously like an interstate tunnel. Like, this is a bridge over a tunnel. But photogrammetry didn't didn't really get that right so the cars kind of pop in and out you just see I wonder if it's the same cars that one is silver and there's a silver Let's see we got black black silver black 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 silver 
black, yeah. So the cars actually are lined up, like it's the same cars going through, but the tunnel is not not appropriately modeled. I wonder if there's a Munich Airport expansion you could get that would make that right. It's kind of funny. Well, I, uh, I said it on Tuesday, and I'll say it again. I don't think, I don't think that will happen to me again in a million years. Just the timing of running out of fuel is just, just so insanely unlikely. And I, I think this flight has kind of proven that because I have, you know, it's still 150 pounds. I have plenty of fuel, so it was just the coincidence of maybe the wind was not pushing me as much or maybe there was a headwind it just took me longer to taxi changing altitude those couple of times it was just enough to put me right at that exact point where I would run out of fuel on approach and clearly the 1400 even though it seems low to me clearly it is enough to make it all the way if you don't have those kind of extraneous circumstances going on. Of course, it does make me think, you know, there could be another circumstance in which you do run out of fuel, you know, three quarters of the way through your flight. And I don't know what I would do there. I don't remember how to, you know, in in Flight Unlimited 2, you could always just declare an emergency, and I think there is an emergency frequency you dial in, and it would just say, you know, Mayday, this is Citation November 6, 7, 6, 7, 5, 6, 4, 9. Uh, I've lost my engine, or whatever the, uh, I think it always said I lost my engine, actually. Um, and then the controller would direct you, they would say something like, 649, the nearest airport is at your, um, is, you know, 270 degrees, 10 miles, something like that. And so you could at least orient yourself and, and try to coast toward it and then try to figure out where the runways were. Um, and if you, you know, in this plane, if you're up at... Position Cessna 649 What, like the cars? Or was he talking about this van? Roger Cessna 649 Not sure what the other traffic was. I think it might have been that service vehicle behind me. Obviously, there's the same glitch here with the uh, interstate tunnel. It's really funny. Um, but anyway, yeah, you could. You know, if, if you were at a high altitude in the Citation, I don't think it would be impossible. I think you could, I think you could totally, um, totally coast and, and dead stick land. Um, they don't require that long of a runway. I mean, it's a very small plane. You know, it's, there's only like six seats back there. So I, I think you could make it. So again, I'm kind of right around, if I average my two fuels, I'm right around that 100. And like I said earlier, last, you know, when I did this on Tuesday, I was all the way down to 100, still just beginning my, um, my final into the runway. I don't remember, I think it was, maybe it was Decel was the nav point. Um, and there's my destination. Not sure why I didn't turn left there, but that's not, not what the ribbon was telling me to do.
been meaning to look up what this kind of orange ball thing is right there. Like I feel like I feel like I want to stick like a clipboard up there or something. And that might be what it is. Just a place like a kneeboard holder. I know this is your angle of attack indicator. I know I know how that works. But these two orange they look like rubber balls and then this nub. It's in a lot of different planes and I haven't I haven't looked up what the use of that is. Ooh, the ribbon is bringing me way too close to the other planes. Oh my gosh, there's a guy right in front of me. This thing tight. Look at that. If I if I followed that ribbon, I'd be taking out this whole row of planes with my wing. Live player. It's a really cool looking play. Whoa, 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 whoa. Easy fuel trap. Holy crap. Trying to kill us all? This thing out of four and I'd be honking. Alrighty, parking brake is set. I don't know why it gives me that warning. And I will secure my aircraft. Turn on my off my ice. Turn off my lights. Don't put those anymore. Come down here and stop the engines. I don't know why it gives me those warnings. Obviously I'm intending to turn all this stuff off. And that's gonna be it. Avionics off, flight complete. 21, oh no, that's nine at the night. So total time of flight was 51 minutes. What is my stream at right here? Yeah, it's already at an hour and a half, so that's obviously just uh, just what this flight takes. Uh, yeah, last time it was shorter because I couldn't do all that taxiing, and I, I know that taxiing probably took 10 or 15 minutes, so... So that's it. Um, I, uh, I'll call that a good flight. I, I enjoyed myself, and I hope that uh, the viewer, if there, if there are any, enjoyed it too um and whether or not you enjoyed i hope you have a wonderful uh, wonderful day until next time <laughs>